Heidegger's work on the relation between art and craft in, in, the, in the essay, The Origin of the Work of Art. Something, um, this is why I said my, my relation to Heidegger changed. I, I, I grasped something that I simply hadn't grasped before. Um, and that had to do with the way he was using the term craft in the essay, The Origin of the Work of Art. Near the beginning of the essay, um, Heidegger starts talking about the, um, the question of how to approach the, what, what he's calling the essence of art, or the, the origin of the work of art. And he says that this, this takes us immediately into a circle, and those of you who know Heidegger will be familiar with this, this circle. And um, in this case, the circle is that how can we begin to approach the question of art if we, if we don't know what art is? Um, how can we even select a work of art? Because that presupposes that we know what art is. Uh, um, on the other hand, if we don't proceed from works, how will we ever approach art? And so he's, he's, he's thinking about this problem, which is actually, ultimately, in this essay, will become the question of how we think a material instantiation of the event of truth. If truth is the condition for anything to appear uh, as, as that thing um, in its essence, um, what, how are we to think the event of truth in a thing? Right? If, 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 uh, if, if the event of truth requires something like art, well then we have to think it's, it's material conditions and this becomes a, a, a rather complex uh, circular question. Right? Um, thinking about the conditions and the thing that, that makes these conditions possible. When we engage this circle, we are um, undertaking thought as, in, in a celebratory way, as I remember. It's a feast. He speaks of the feast of thought. And it's like suddenly trumpets are going off, you know, and he's, he's, he's got the whole orchestra. Uh, and, and it's a weird moment. It, it lasts for just a paragraph. And then he moves into the, um, you know, in, into the analysis that, that he will undertake in the essay. And I've always been puzzled by that, that kind of um, that shift in tone at that moment. Heidegger doesn't do things um, in his, in his uh, let's say, in his very crafted writings, you know, in the ones that are published. Um, he doesn't do things casually. And the, 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 I say, you know, crafted writings, these, these works are very, very staged. Um, and, and one learns, you know, when, in reading Heidegger, reading Heidegger is a bit of a craft. One, one really learns to follow the, the movement of his thinking through the writing. And, and, and if you don't do that, you really don't get what he's saying. Because he's not offering a set of concepts. He's, he's offering an approach to what he calls a thought. So one has to follow him in that approach. And that is, another way of putting that is to move in that circle that, that he's describing at the beginning. So he, he calls this the feast of thought. And then he says, if we understand the thought is a craft. Okay. Um, that's that one, I think many readers might not even pause over that moment. But in the coming pages, he's going to start to distinguish art and craft. When he makes that distinction, craft is, in some sense, derogated. It, 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 it comes to a secondary position with respect to art. It's in a secondary position with respect to the question of truth, actually. Because Heidegger is claiming that truth happens in art. It's one of the, he says it's one of the five places in which it happens. Um, and so he's giving a very uh, special place to art, and in some sense a very exalted place. 
And within the, the framework of that um, philosophical question, because this is a, a philosophical essay, he's answering Hegel um, first and foremost. Um, and so he's, it's, it's an intervention in the history of thinking about uh, philosophy of art. But it's a rather powerful intervention because he, he, he is he's taking up the question of truth immediately after his political engagements, which is again something very important. But it is a it's it's a, it's a it's a philosophical essay, and um, and in that respect, the position he accords to craft, as I say, it's kind of secondary. It's in relation to this question of truth. But thought is also a place where truth occurs, according to this essay. Um, in fact, that's what he's saying in those first words about the, the feast of thought. So uh, craft apparently is working in two registers. And in the beginning of that essay, he signals the one, which is the, let's just say, the facility, the, the ontological one, um, where, where, where thought is a craft, and thought is a site where truth occurs. And then, as he moves into the essay, craft then becomes something to be understood with regard to a form of making that answers to the event of truth. which in some sense has always already happened in art. So craft follows art in that sense. So it's happening on two registers. And I have uh, for many years presented the, um, the origin of the work of art, this essay, here in Sasfe. I was asked to teach it many years ago and it did it for many times. Um, I've always focused on the question of art and it wasn't until we had this, this seminar that I came to, to approach the question of craft and begin to puzzle over this strange double registry for, for craft. Um, what would craft mean if thought is a craft or if you know, writing in, as, as an act of thought uh, is a craft? <coughs> so to approach that I, I went to uh, Heidegger's text, What is Called Thinking. And there we find him openly claiming that thought is a craft. And he does this in the opening pages. Uh, again, I'll cite something where he, he makes this, this claim. Um, actually, in those opening pages, he's talking about teaching. And he understands, it, it, his question is, how do you teach thinking? And, um, and he says, well, actually, this is not the, the teacher has to be someone who is capable of learning and teaching how to learn or to teaching learning, which is um, in some sense the hardest thing of all, he says. So he's talking about this relation between uh, the teacher and the student and the role of the master in craft, actually, in this context. And he says it has to do with, it has to do with learning and a way of learning to answer to what the thing at hand calls upon us to think or do. So it's, it's really to learn a pragmatics, actually, um, a, a practice, a form of practice. What, uh, what, what was fascinating for me and part of my reason for recounting in this way is that something happened in the writing of this essay and in the context which was very special for me. I, I, I want to recount it because I think it's, um, it's not insignificant. Robert was talking in the first part of the session about uh, Jane logic and you know, forms of thinking that don't conform to metaphysical binary uh, structures and can begin to approach questions of um, something that is unreasonable, or, you know, like, like a zero, <laughs> for example. Um, th it's things that escape, <coughs> a, a, in a certain sense, a good logic. And <coughs> um, at the same time, I was very attentive to material in Heidegger and in Blanchot about ways in which there are dimensions of experience 
uh, an experience of thought where it must come to grips with what exceeds its, its, its capacity or its hold. Right? And, um, and I began, I was thinking a lot about the question of our relation to our mortality in, in this respect. Um, because as you'll see, um, Heidegger at one point says that we must learn to practice uh, our relation to death. And he's doing that in the context of talking about the use of the hand and, and craft, actually. So I was, uh, I was starting, to, I was trying to put these things together in some way, and when I wrote this essay, so, well, actually, I didn't write it. Um, I came to that class, as I remember, with notes, um, with some material written, and I, I have to tell you, I, I entered into a strange state. I was, I was composing. As, as I was speaking, and I didn't really know what I was doing as I was doing it. And Anton and I, was, we were sharing this this morning. He's, he's, he's experienced this in improvisation and in, in music, and in, and in, I guess, in writing music as he plays it. In compo and and um, so it was, I thought, well, this is, something's happened. I, I you know, I, 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 to this day, I, don't, I can't say exactly what. And, if you, and as you listen, you say, well, I recognize a lot of your stuff here, Chris. This is not that different. Nevertheless, for me, something happened, and, and it had to do with this context. And that's why I said that, you know, there's something about what we are undertaking here, which is to be exposed to the question of craft, and to try to think craft at the same time, and to think about how thinking is a craft. That's, for me, something quite um, important happened.